So it has object of some mass m is released at some point, slice the bottom of the incline of angle theta, then collides with the horizontal massless spring, compressing it. Um, max, so let me just draw. So eventually it'll have like, compressed it by some amount. And I'm given that uh, displacement, delta x of 0 0.75 meters, and the spring constant, oh, good to have the number actually, 500 Newton per meter. The height of the incline is given uh, at two meters and the horizontal surface is frictionless. Oh, so this is the surface that's frictionless. Wait, then do I have, okay, I must have friction along the incline here. All right. Um, wait. Did they ever give me? Uh, okay, all right. I think I know what I'm gonna do. Okay, all right. It says, um, so it asks a bunch of multi-part questions. Um, it asks, what is the speed of the object at the bottom of the incline? And um, the first thing I would have liked to do is, you know, this is an inclined plane question. I Normally I like to go in order, like in some sequential order. So this is my, Initial, I would like to get to this uh, snapshot here, uh, snapshot two, and use the uh, information in a sequential way. But what gives me a little bit of a pause is I'm told that horizontal surface is frictionless. And there's a kind of a principle of uh, interpretation is that when one thing is stated that excludes the other things, it says the horizontal surface, horizontal surface is frictionless. So that must mean this uh, surface here is not frictionless. In fact, it asks for work of friction. So I have a missing information here. To go from this initial stage to here in a sequential order like this, I'm missing here. I, that's why I was looking for, hey, am I given friction coefficient? And I'm not told the friction coefficient. So. So yeah, I, I, can't, I can't do it this way. I can't go in a linear sequence. I can do it, solve this in a forward way. That's when you look for, okay, can I solve it backwards? <laughs> can, is there some way I can connect the state here where the um, object is moving to the right with some speed of V uh, to something else that happened uh, in the future <laughs> uh, from that point the perspective? And um, this is what I see here. This block is moving along a frictionless surface and eventually it's going to collide with the spring and compress it in some maximum amount here. So step number three. And reading through this description, I am thinking, oh, it looks like energy is conserved. And by energy, once again, I mean mechanical energy is conserved. So. So I'm going to use conservation of energy. I'm going to use conservation of mechanical energy. And I'll just, uh, in the interest time, I'll just shortcut through the steps. I'm going to write down, okay, at this state here, I have energy, kinetic energy is the only thing I have. So I have energy of one half mv square. Okay. And at this state, state number three, I'm going to have the, it's at the maximum compression is where the velocity is zero. It's not moving anymore. It's like, it's not moving towards the spring. It's not moving away from spring. So it's at rest momentarily. So at that state, um, all the energy that has is spring potential energy. That should be one half K uh, delta X squared. And I have all the numbers for that there. So yeah, I can just solve for free there. And I think, uh, let me write the value for mass here so that can refer to 11.5, mass is 11.5 kilogram. So, so yeah, I, I'll solve for V that way. I think that's uh, what's, um, that's actually what it's looking for. <laughs> so uh, setting this to equal, uh, let me solve for V, then one half cancel, and oh, I did this algebra before. So let me just uh, recall from my memory what the answer was. The answer was delta x times the square root of k over m. Um, now, this is not an endorsement to remember this uh, formula. 
it's not worth memorizing. Just you know, set up the conservation of energy equation and go through the algebra. It's just that at some point you've done it so many times that <laughs> you don't have to go through every single step. Uh, let me work out the numbers here uh, because it's going to be useful for the next question and then uh, write it in that blank there. Um, so delta x is 0 0.75 times um, square root of 500 divided by the mass, 11.5 uh, square rooted, double check all the input looks right, equals 4.945. I'm just going to write down an extra significant field here. 4.945. Okay, and let's uh, come back to the question of what is the work of friction on the object while it's on the incline. And uh, this is where it's uh, useful to have this intuitive sense that going from this initial to, uh, let me just move this thing that's in the way. Um, going from that initial to step num uh, snapshot to energy, by which I mean mechanical energy, is not conserved. Because if it were, you could have actually done this uh, calculation. You could have done, okay, in the initial state with some height, I have gravitational potential energy. And the gravitational potential energy is mgh. Set that equal to one half mv squared. Solve for v, get an answer. You might have actually even done that for part a, and then you'll have realized, oh, that's wrong. <laughs> and the reason that's wrong is because energy is not conserved. Now, when mechanical energy is not conserved, uh, we still uh, track down in what, by, by through what mechanism that, uh, that portion of the lost mechanical energy has been transformed to other forms of energy. And here, that mechanism is friction. And it's the work done by friction that will be connected to the amount by which energy is not conserved. So, so yeah, that's all you really have to do. So let me just do this part numerically. I'm going to work out this answer, just work out the number. See that that's greater than the, the kinetic energy number. Oh, so I guess I need to calculate that too. And then I'm just gonna say that the, that difference is the friction, work on my friction. So the original kinetic energy, I guess I'll just bring up the calculator and put in the numbers. Mass, which is uh, 11.5 times, uh, G, 9.8. Um, while we are still fixing these uh, rounding issues, don't use 10, use 9.8 <laughs> times height, H2. Okay, so the original potential energy is 225.4. Uh, joules of potential energy. And let me calculate the kinetic energy here using the value of V we calculated earlier. That's going to be half times the mass, 11.5, times the speed, um, uh, 4.945 squared, make sure everything looks right, equals 140.6, 140.6 joule. Yeah, so somehow I started out with this much energy, only they ended up with this much kinetic energy at the bottom. I blame all the difference on the friction force. So the difference of 225.4 minus 140.6 is the work done or should be <laughs> work done by friction force. And um, if you're doing this uh, experiment, um, I think that's where you just make the assumption that uh, the difference, we blame that on friction and we are not investigating much further. Okay, uh, spring recalls uh, and sends the object back towards the incline. What is the speed of the object when it reaches the base of the incline? Oh, that's an easy question. Because this entire process here is an energy conserving process. The way back, I think energy conserved on the way back too. So, so that means uh, when it comes back, it should have the exact same speed it had uh, when it was here going to the right. So it should be 4.945. Ah, here's an interesting question. What vertical distance does it move back up the incline? Now, if you set these two equal to each other and solve for h or u h prime or whatever, um, you're gonna get on the wrong answer. 
because this fact has not changed. While the mass is moving on the incline, mechanical energy won't be conserved. So, um, <laughs> so you have to account for that. Uh, what's the good way to do it? Um, so there are many different ways to do it. I think the standard way to do, um, you can figure out the friction coefficient and use that. Um, let me do this. I think I don't really need a friction coefficient as much as I need a friction force. I already have number for the work done by friction force. And I can figure out the distance here. So let me figure out how much friction force was acting as the uh, mass was sliding downward. So as the mass was sliding downward, so let me just work out friction here. Um, so on the down slide, this is what you had. Um, uh, so you had, well, uh, sorry, I'm drawing free body diagrams, so I need to draw everything. Okay. <laughs> this is the NG, and that's the friction force. And I can figure out the friction force from the amount of work it did. Um, I need a displacement here. Uh, so it's going to be this 2.0 meters H. That's the displacement time or the, the sliding slope times uh, sine theta. So D is going to be H um, divided by sine theta. So uh, let me just work out the number for D and just write it down. Um, so 2 meters divided by sine of 30 degrees. Uh, sine, so 2 divided by sine. Oh, I, I should have known that. 4 meters. <laughs> I, could have, I should have been able to do that in my head. I don't know why I pulled out a calculator. So the friction force is that work done divided by the displacement, or the work done by friction divided by displacement. That should be, um, I can do it in my head. It's a 21 point. Two, but let me just do it on a calculator to be sure that I didn't make a mistake. 21.2. <laughs> it's a 21.2 newtons. So that's a how much friction force is acting on the down slide. And the assertion I want to make that I think is correct as far as the correctness goes is um, the magnitude of the friction force won't change that um, so I figured out this, ma this much magnitude for the downslide portion of the displacement uh, for, of the motion. Now the conceptual challenge that you have is while the block is sliding up, you don't have the exact same free body diagram. That is actually why friction force is not a conservative force. So on the up slide, Kind of. I don't know if that's even a word. Um, the free body diagram you have is this. You have weight pulling it down. We have normal force pushing it that way. And friction force is just going to be opposing the sliding. So friction force will actually be pointed downward. But I think because the normal force won't have changed and the friction coefficient won't have changed, so when you work out the magnitude of friction force, you're just going to get the same magnitude of friction force, 21.2 newton. So, so I'm going to make use of that. And um, so this is kind of the last piece that you need. And then to solve this, you do have to set up, this is the part of, um, well, I'm going to say it's part of math that everyone hates. And it, or everyone that I hear hates. I didn't hate it, but I hear other people hate it. Um, and I think that's the part that makes physics challenging for a lot of people. It, it's, a, it's a word question. Um, so you have a question that says, okay, um, you have all these things that are, how, what vertical distance does the, uh, does the block move up? And you have to first start by figuring out um, in, what in what formula equation this H will occur in. 
there's not one simple formula you can look up that will give you that. You have to think through the situation and set up the equation. Uh, so let me do that right now. So this is what I'm going to do. Uh, so I have the block here. Um, this time moving up. So let me call that snapshot four. And it's going to go to snapshot five at some point where it's going to be at rest, v is equal to zero. So um, I think I'm going to make some statement about energy uh, because we are in the energy chapter. So in snapshot four, you have energy of one half mb squared. Okay. And as you go to snapshot five, um, well, at that exact snapshot, you are going to have zero kinetic energy and you will have all the potential energy associated with the height. You will have energy mgh. And if you simply try to set equal sign here, then that won't work because that's assuming that energy is conserved here and it's not conserved. So what you have to do is you have to account for the lowest part of the energy, which is the work done by friction prime. So that it's not the same as that. Um, so once you account for how much work that the friction force does, then you can now say that left hand side is equal to the right hand side. So, so now you have to figure out, okay, what's the expression for the work done by friction force? We are going to be using the magnitude of friction force. We need that. And we need to write down, okay, I need to write down the formula for that. So the work done by friction force is going to be the for friction force times the displacement. And the displacement here, what I'm going to label as d prime here. Oh, that's going to relate to this height, h. So that's going to be height h times sine theta. So you have to go through all this reasoning process uh, to arrive at really this stage here where, uh, where you have done, where you can now write down this. Uh, MGH plus the work done by friction, amount of friction force times H times sine theta. Now, you know, if I were to give you this equation and tell you solve for H, uh, you can do that given uh, as long as you are given all the other parameters. Um, so that's the easy part of math. That's the part of algebra that no one hated. <laughs> but the thing that makes physics difficult is that you have to be the one coming up with this equation. Because if you are looking for this equation in, this, in the textbook or whatever, you're not going to find it anywhere. Um, that's why what we are teaching in physics is the problem solving technique, skills, strategy, so that you know how to come up with the equation to solve. You need to know the ultimate question to life, universe, and everything before the answer makes any sense. So, um, so let me solve for H there. I guess I should wrap up and plug in the numbers and show that it's actually correct. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, I'm going to factor out H. And I'll just do it in place so that I don't have to write as much. Okay. Factor out H. Um, and then, oh, I guess I can just divide both sides by MG that. Um, so let me do that. Uh, so H is equal to uh, one half MB squared over um, MG plus friction force sine theta. And if you did this in a clever way, you could have actually made the mass cancel out. But at some point, it's easier to just quicker, easier and quicker to just plug in the numbers. So I'm just going to do that. 0 0.5 times the mass, 11.5 times the speed, 4.945 squared uh, is equal to, and it's 140.6 um, joules divided by, um, and the uh, uh, 11. 0.5 times 9.8 plus the friction force, which I work to be 21.2. By the way, my calculator does the order of operation on its own. That's why I'm not worrying too much. Um, 
your calculator. And I know, I now know sine of 30 is one half. I'm just doing it for, uh, so my calculator, when it ha has this as input, it does the order of operation on it all. Uh, so 123.3 newtons. 123.3 newtons and joule per newton will give you a meter and the answer is 140.6 divided to 123.3 1.14 meters so that should be the answer so yeah all right uh, and you know these are correct numbers for me because your numbers will generate differently 84.8 4.945 did I? Oh, work. Eh, I guess. <laughs> Just so that you know, on an exam, there won't be questions like this where that sign sign error uh, gets you correct versus incorrect answer. Okay, I need to fix the rounding that for that one. I don't know. <laughs> That's why we are fixing the rounding issue, so that it's not an issue. <laughs> uh, it's searching around for correct uh, rounded value like that. That's not what we recommend. But um, yeah, I, I guess that's. Uh, but the approach I demonstrated, they should all be correct.